Hey friends, it's Dana with MDT Market, and I am so excited to be back with you for another vlog. It feels like it's been forever. So I am hoping you are enjoying this new series that we've started in 2022. It's something that I'm really enjoying already just because I get to share a little bit of history about how we started our business and kind of take your questions and see um, how we can help you if you're looking to start your own business. So I'm in the back office area today. As you can see, there is a mess behind me, but this is hashtag real life. I could put a pretty backdrop and do all of these things for you, but I wanna let you know that sometimes things don't go as planned. And I feel like ever since we opened our brick and mortar here in my hometown of Fairfax, Missouri, nothing has gone as planned. So I'm gonna kind of take you back and kind of show you how it's not gone as planned. So when we started our business, like I said last time in the vlog, we started in our three car garage and we had hopes to one day move into a warehouse or bigger location so that we could expand our business. But we were both working full time. I was working full time from home. My husband had an amazing job full time and we just kept saying someday, someday. And I always say God has a plan bigger than yours and God always has something in store that you may not be expecting. And that is really what happened guess what, five years ago in next month, in March. So um, what happened, and I'll just put it very mildly, my husband went to work one day and came home one day without a job, and the reason is because his company reorganized. So that was kind of a shock to us. I will be honest, we had already purchased this building here on Main Street in Fairfax, not knowing what God was planning for our future. What do I mean by that? We had heard this building was available. My dad was actually interested in purchasing it. And we said, dad, we really need a place like on the weekends to build furniture. Our furniture business was growing. As you grow your business and start making things, it gets, word of mouth gets out. Your friends and family start hearing about it. And then we had also pursued a small business in the West Bottoms in Kansas City and actually um, reached out to them and um, purchased a rental booth so we could put our products there and sell on a monthly basis. So that's kind of how we started selling besides online. We'd created a Facebook group, all of that good stuff. But then our three car garage, we were no longer being able to park in the three car garage. So we decided we needed to find a location. And this building that I'm currently in became available and we thought, that's perfect. We'll go up there on the weekends. We'll kind of make that our little weekend getaway. And then we'll live in the city. Well, that didn't really happen because once we knew the shift with our full-time jobs had happened, we thought we either take the plunge and go full-time with this or we never will. And we really felt like God was leading us to move up here, sell our home, get out of our comfort zone and try something new. So I will be honest, there have, were lots of tears, there were lots of moments of happiness, lots of moments of frustration, and that has really been um, what has been happening the last five years with our small business. Every small business, I think if you've ever had a small business of your own, you probably understand that. There's, there's great moments and then there's really frustrating moments. And so we finished this remodel of this building, my husband, ended up putting his workshop, and I will try and attach pictures at the end, uh, in this room here. So this room originally was the wood shop. This is where we were gonna build the furniture and all of that kind of stuff. Originally, when we bought this building, we were not sure how we were gonna set it up because we weren't planning on having a brick and mortar. We were just gonna have a wood shop to build the pretty furniture. See what I'm saying? Nothing can go as planned. So. This became the wood shop. This became where we were building the beautiful product. And then we had this amazing space that I'm gonna take you out to right now in our building. And this was a space where we knew the sky was the limit. We could actually sell some of our products, have a store location. And then I got this crazy idea. Let's do some DIY workshops. So the lights are off today, but I wanna just kind of turn this around here in just a minute and do a quick video for you. Okay, so this is the space where our brick and mortar currently is. We're closed today. Um, and as you can see, it is a nice big space. We have literally taken this space and transformed it year after year after year. 
Originally, when we decided to open a brick and mortar, I was still doing my direct sales business full time and I needed an office space. So over in this corner over here was where I housed my office and was thinking no one was gonna come into our brick and mortar. I wasn't sure that we were gonna be super busy. I mean, we're in a town of 600 people. So the thought of having people in here all the time really didn't cross my mind. I thought I was gonna work in this pretty little happy space. We had the shelves that are back here pulled up here and we kind of divided everything. And then this space minus the countertop was my place to sell our items. And then back where this countertop begins, that's actually where we decided to start hosting DIY workshops. Boy, were we in for an awakening. So I wanna back up just a moment before I go into a little bit more detail about our starting a DIY workshop and a brick and mortar. Why did we move to my hometown of 600 people when we knew the traffic wasn't going to be here? Really the appeal was the price was right. Let me just say this, the price of our building was the cost of one month of a rental space of, of about this size in Liberty, Missouri. And so it just made financial sense for us. We were able to sell our home within a week. We were able to move up here within 30 days. Thankfully, God blessed us with an amazing landlord and renter, rental space where we could live until we could find a home. And we had this gorgeous building that we could work out of. So God's timing is always right, even when it feels like maybe it's a little crazy. Um, so this just made common sense to us. This was the financial, um, let's make sense and make money and not go into severe debt by purchasing this building. So that was the first start of that. So now let's move on to the DIY workshop, right? So where did that idea come from? So DIY workshops were just kind of beginning when we purchased this building. I had some friends who were doing DIY workshops in other parts of the country. I had started hearing of a couple of brand names that were offering workshops and I thought, this is a small town. My sister had currently moved into the county as well about a year before us. And we just thought there was no place for women and children to have anything fun to do. You can go to the city and you can go paint pottery. You can go to a DIY workshop. You could go to the movies. You could go to the mall. You could do all these fun things. Meet at the coffee shop. Um, you could take a paint by number class. Like there's all kinds of opportunities in the city, but in a small town there isn't. And so one of the things we really wanted to offer was something for the community to have to do. It was about building relationships with other women and children in this area and letting them feel empowered and uplifted and know that they could do something. So I knew nothing about painting. I had never made a stencil. I didn't even own a Cricut. I've said that before. And there is our vinyl cutter behind me here. We purchased that online. And I thought, this is crazy. We're buying a commercial vinyl cutter. Why would we do that? But my husband has great business instinct and he was like, if this takes off, you're gonna want something that can make more than one thing at a time. And boy, was he right. We had our open house during the Fairfax Fair weekend. And I will say most people were hesitant to sign up for a class because they didn't know what we were gonna be offering. And to be quite frank, I didn't either. I was winging it and faking it real good. Fake it till you make it is the slogan. So I just wanted to offer friends and family and anybody that was in the area, just something fun to do. So the very first thing we did was a centerpiece box. Some of you may remember that if you're watching this video. It was just a little square box that my husband made and we put mason jars in it and it was something you could put like pins and pencils and markers. You could put floral pieces in it. And it was literally just something I thought, we can do this. Okay, that's simple. It had one word on the front. So my amazing brother-in-law helped us set up our vinyl cutter and we Googled the heck out of how to make a stencil and how to pull a stencil and weed it and how to transfer it onto raw wood. That was a lesson we learned very quickly. Then the porch signs took off. Do y'all have a porch sign? If you have not been familiarized with a port sign. It's a six foot tall port sign. And I thought we can make a welcome port sign. Well, wait a second. We can do these cute let it snow port signs and these hello pumpkin port signs and all of these different ideas. 
Thankfully, I had some design background with designing things for social media with my other business, so I knew a program that would work. Many of you may have heard of it, and it is called Canva, and that is how we started creating our stencils. And basically, it works really well with the program we use for our vinyl cutter, and that was some, gave us an option to offer a variety of um, designs to our customers. I can say this. Hindsight, looking back now, I wish I would have spaced out our workshops a little bit more, but we were needing to make money. We were a brand new business and we were the hot thing in the county or in Northwest Missouri. Everybody wanted to come to MDT and everybody wanted to make something. I will say this though, we saturated the market and the workshops were going at, we did sometimes 32 a month. Sometimes there's not even 30 days in a month. It exhausted me and I burned out very quickly. So my lesson for you today, I'm gonna to kind of close with this today. If you're starting out something, go all out, go all out, but don't go all out so much that you burn yourself out. Looking back, I wish I would have done things a little bit differently. I would have not have offered a workshop every single day of the week. I missed so much with my immediate family that first year we were open because I refused to not work. My husband and my father, my family, they all said, Dana, you're gonna burn yourself out. And honestly, I didn't wanna hear it and I didn't wanna believe it. But now looking back, I recognize what the problem was and realized if I had just taken a step back and had just planned out a little bit more in a space of time versus just trying to cram it all in the first year, things would have lasted a little bit longer. Now, there's a lot of factors that happened after the workshops had started to diminish. We had a flood in our area and we had COVID and a pandemic to deal with. So there's a lot of factors that have taken a toll on things throughout the years. We're almost into year five in the brick and mortar. And I will say that I feel like we have, um, we have experience. We kind of know what to expect now. We can kind of look back on the past four years and go, okay, this is what happened in February. So what do we need to do to draw up business? Thankfully we have that and we have a history now, but in your first year as a small business, you don't have that. So it's okay to try something and then try something else. It's okay to say, I wanna do this this month and if it doesn't work, it's okay. Don't call it necessarily a failure, just see it as something, as a place that you learned something. That would be my biggest tip for you. So I am excited to come back and share more with you. If you have questions about anything I've shared, you can definitely leave them in the comments, but hopefully this gives you some ideas of kind of, again, how we have started. I'm gonna share some pictures here in just a minute of what the building looked like when we got a hold of it and what it looks like currently today. So it has taken quite the transformation. Thankfully, I will say this, we did all of the work to our building ourselves. So when we purchased this building and we're trying to scramble and open by August of that same year, we did all of the work thanks to my family and my husband. My husband is the talented builder around here. So he was able to kind of give us some visions and some ideas. I told him I want it to look like this and then he can just go and do it, which is always great because that's how we work as a team. So take a look at the pictures. Let me know if you have questions and I'll be back another day.